Hey, what's up you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you my review of this week's episode of Game of Thrones on HBO, which was called Beyond the Wall. And, uh, yeah, I want to apologize for my lateness, but I got home from work uh, about an hour or two too late tonight, so I had to catch the replay. Um, but <laughs> am I glad I watched it as soon as I could yet again, because uh, Game of Thrones delivered yet another excellent and uh, incredible episode this season. Um, I think it's been a really great season. Um, how in the world uh, IGN gave this episode a 6.9, I, I will never, never understand. Um, look up the review. Uh, look up the review yourself. IGN gave this episode a 6.9. I don't really get it. Uh, I thought this was a great, great episode. Um, you know, just from the way all the battle and chase sequences were shot, just the tone that went with all of that, the environment, the the way that affected it, um, and then the you know the dialogue with the other characters elsewhere, it, it's pretty much uh, got you know perfection, <laughs> you know Game of Thrones perfection. Um, so I don't really know what I Jan is uh, getting at here, but uh, anyway, it seems like every episode this season has just been getting uh, better and better. And at this point, I think it's just to the level of greatness that uh, only next year's, uh, you know, climactic moments will top. But that's how good this was. Um, so, of course, uh, it was mainly revolved around Jon, um, the Hound, Tormund, Jorah, Gendry, and, was, and as well as the uh, Brotherhood Without Banners and some other, uh, you know, nameless people they had taken with them. Which, you know, they did kind of pop up at random times. We'd just be seeing someone dragged off that we don't really know. Um, but, you know, it's just like a weird, minor, little, little, little nitpick, um, but it's mainly revolved around them going out beyond the wall, you know, to, uh, capture a white, you know, to take to Cersei to show her what the real threat is, and they should focus on that, we'll see how that goes next week. So, before we get to that, though, um, let us talk about Arya and Sansa in Winterfell. Of course, Arya confronting Sansa with the, uh, letter she had found, you know, which is, uh, you know, sent during the time of, uh, season two and three, during Rob's Rebellion and everything like that. Um, of course, Sansa, you know, she feels pretty, uh, irate and almost, uh, you know, very personally, uh, betrayed by this, because this led to, uh, the ex execution of Ned and, you know, really seemed to show, like, a very big weakness in Sansa, or, like, another side to her that Arya was sort of exploiting in the previous episode. You know, saying how she really wants to be queen and she's more about protecting herself and you know basically you know Arya you know, said in much more clever ways than I am right now um, you know I do think it is correct that there is a part of Sansa's psyche that does want to be queen and ways hope John doesn't hope so John doesn't come back um, but I do think Arya is a little bit harsh with her this week because Sansa was forced to write this and yeah she might like you know pretty things or being a, comforted and you know things like that again I'm not really speaking correctly um, <laughs> but at the same time you know Sansa we've seen her journey firsthand you know thanks to our uh, fan perspective and our viewer perspective we know what she's been through and uh, what kind of pressure she is under and what kind of uh, you know, situation she is really in there um, she really didn't have much of a choice you know but to you know write that she wanted her beloved Joffrey protected and you know, have them find some kind of peace or something um, you know, Sansa and Arya have just grown up in very different, uh, worlds, really, although the same, just in very different manners. Um, and I think that really showed here, although I really hope, uh, what this actually is, is Arya, you know, and Sansa sort of playing little finger and exaggerating the issues between the two. I do think they are different. I do think they have some form of, uh, wall between each other that sort of, uh, you know, holds them a little bit apart, especially compared to where they were at the beginning of the series. Um, but at the same time, I don't think it's to the extent where Arya is almost, you know, threatening to potentially kill Sansa. Although, again, at the same time, I do think some of what Arya said about her is true. I don't think it's going to as large an extent as she is seeming to uh, push it. If Arya is being completely serious to Sansa here, you know, I, I gotta say, I, I'm, I'm on uh, Sansa's side of things here, at least, uh, when it comes down to it, maybe. Um, but I still thought that dialogue was really, really well written between the two, and Arya delivered it well, especially with how creepy she was when Sansa discovered her faces and everything like that. Um, so that was good. 
Yeah, I think it's about time we, we see uh, Littlefinger die, though. Hopefully that comes... <sighs> Excuse me. Hopefully that comes fairly soon. And, uh... And of course, uh, Daenerys eventually leaving to go and, uh, you know, rescue the others beyond the wall. Um, Tyrion did try to stop her from doing that just because of what would happen if uh, they, had lo they lost her, you know, that would just... You know, devastate all, everything they've tried to build and seeing you know, everyone who cares about her um, that's still there um, but you know Daenerys she's, she's going to go out and uh, do whatever she could for him at that point um, but before we get to that climactic uh, sequence here um, I really like the journey as they're wa again walking through uh, the increasingly uh, awful you know weather beyond the wall um, I just saw they, the episode did a great job, you know, just touching on every character's, you know, personality and their uh, dynamics and connections or uh, parallels and contrasts, I thought were all really well handled. Um, I like the banter between uh, Tormund and uh, the Hound, especially. I thought that, that was pretty fun, uh, especially when uh, Tormund uh, brought up Brienne, you know, and said he wanted to make babies with her that would grow up as, uh, like, these ginger rulers and, uh, you know, take over the world, basically, and stuff like that. And, you know, the hounds that he knows are, of course, from a certain experience. Um, you know, Tormund sort of went after the hound, you know, for his, uh, you know, burn and almost like, uh, mo not, I, don't know, I don't know if I want to say mocking him, but almost, you know, poking at, you know, what might have happened to him as a kid. And Tormund sort of guessed it pretty quickly, um, you know, why the hound grew up to be such a mean motherfucker. <laughs> um, yeah, so that, I like that quite a bit. Um, and of course when John knows there's uh, quite a bit of a Whites and uh, White Walkers coming, he tells Gendry or Gendry to, uh, you know, run off and he does, you know, to go and, uh, warn Daenerys and, you know, get word to her. Um, you know, so yeah, kudos to him there for, you know, making that such a long damn haul back there. Um, and just that sequence, uh, the whole battle sequence that, you know, towards the end of the episode, the main, you know, point of the episode I thought was just so well shot again um, Game of Thrones has proven time and time again that it has some of the best fight and uh, battle sequences possible and here it is shown again um, also very eerie and just uh, creepy and very intense when they're just surrounded by all those undead all around them you know just like uh, you know you know quite a few hit you know, like a couple large hills worth at least um, you know, as uh, they run to the ice and it breaks, so it gives them like a temporary relief as they're staying on these rocks in the center of uh, the frozen uh, lake or uh, water there. Um, and they just wait, you know, for the water to freeze over again that broke. Um, so I was glad to see not, that not all of them were just like mindlessly run into the water, you know, they realized what was going on and then they just waited for it to, you know, freeze over for them. And then also the hound, you know, throwing the rock at the uh, white and knocking its jaw off. <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny. Um, although he probably shouldn't have provoked him like that. I still got a kick out of it. Um, also awesome that the hound got to use uh, Gendry's, uh, you know, hammer there. I thought he was badass with it. And then also when he pulled out a little hatchet thing he had too, it was good of course too. It just depends on the circumstance of how he wanted to fight and how quickly. Um, I thought that was good. Also, the undead uh, polar bear. <laughs> you know, I didn't really see that coming. It, you know, you could tell it was CG, of course, but it was still pretty intense. I didn't expect it to be that. It was fucking massive. <laughs> and, uh, you know, fierce as hell. So I like that. I like that we got another kind of uh, um, uh, creature, you know, in uh, the show now that we've seen like that. Um, we're probably not going to see another undead polar bear, but I still thought that was pretty intense. Um... And, uh, you know, when Daenerys shows up with the dragons, it's, you know, really cool visual to seeing it, you know, just, uh, obliterate, you know, quite a few of the undead, you know, with the fire and everything, all three of them. You know, again, you know, kudos to, uh, Daenerys for showing up herself there, although the risk is pretty immense. And again, realistically, she might have been, have been killed by now by all those arrows she somehow missed in, uh, the battle with, uh, Jaime and the Lannister army, and, uh, to this... <laughs> I don't know if you heard my dog in the background there, but she's sleeping. She likes to make a little bit of noise when she's pretty far into it. But uh, anyway, um, you know, Daenerys probably would have been dead by now, honestly. But you know, we gotta have you know some kind of story here, and 
I, you know, I was I was worried about a few of the characters. I'm glad that not everyone made it. You know, from the wound uh, that one brother without banners took, at least he died. I'm not saying it's good that he died. I'm just saying someone needed to die to bring some sense of realism and, uh, you know, or at least like a real sense of danger to what they're actually going through here. And I think they succeeded with that. Although I feel like there should have been like one other uh, death of some kind. Um, you know, I'm not really sure who I would have went with. You know, you could say the Hound because, you know, he had that vision of uh, the area they were at. Although I think there's still a lot more that needs to happen with the Hound before he is killed off, if he is at all. He needs to reunite with Arya, then we need that Clegane bowl, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, I definitely think the Hound's going to come to next season now. Hopefully he survives or at least kills his brother and reunites with Arya first before sacrificing himself, perhaps. Um, but I'm glad he made it through here. Um, I like the conversations between Jorah and John as well. And you know, we didn't think John was going to die at the end, but when he was one under the water, then he uh, he actually got himself out, and then the, all the undead noticed him getting up again. Um, you know, it, it did bring a real sense of uh, uncertainty, I thought. And again, we knew that he probably wasn't going to just die right there, but you know, it is Game of Thrones, so you know we don't fully know, I guess. Uncle Benjamin showing up felt a little bit random, and... It, was very very quick um but i guess i don't really know what other way they would have used him at any point um but at least john snow got to know he is out there and that's you know how uh Benjen went out was you know saving john personally and uh, just one-on-one -on -one like that i thought that that made for still made for a good moment um and uh of course how could i uh, not talk about Viserion? you know one of daenerys's dragons you know being killed with that massive ice spear you know thrown by the night king imagine the force <laughs> that would have to be with a Night King's arm to actually, uh, looks like it would have done more damage than that, uh, you know, Scorpion, that spear that, uh, Cersei had made. It looks like it did more damage than that would have done, and that's, uh, you know, pretty shocking. Um, but, you know, it just shows the power of the Night King, I suppose, and it, you know, I had seen some leaked information, you know, it, it, it's just been happening lately, unfortunately, so I did know some of these things that were gonna happen, um, but still, it was, a uh, pretty devastating to see uh the dragon go down like that you know i really felt for daenerys and i'll admit i got i got a little bit i almost got a little bit teary you know not quite but i definitely felt uh this the gravity and this the dread of what happened there you know it was hard to watch for sure um and then of course he is a uh, resurrected undead at the end and now uh, the white walkers have a dragon so that's not good um to say the very least um, that's how are they gonna stop it? You know, are they gonna make like bigger spears to get and you know, be launched by a scorpion uh, contraption that Cersei had built, or uh, you know something like that? I don't know. But yeah, I thought this was an excellent episode, and I really liked uh, John and uh, Danny's moments or Daenerys's moments. Um, you know, John sort of uh, you know seemingly you know willing to bend the knee to her now, you know, as he sees that that's not really what's important. He, and John knows that too, but he's just trying to really make up in his head what's best for his people. I don't think John is really as driven by his pride as some say. Um, but he, you know, probably sees how uh, unimportant that is now compared to what's going on. Um, and I do think they're both Amelia Clark and jo and uh, Kit Harrington are doing an excellent job in their scenes together. And I've, I feel, you know, they're, you know, how close they are getting, you know, I don't know if it needs to happen this season, but I, I can understand it if it does at this point, so that's good, that succeeded with that, um, so yeah, let me know what you guys thought about this episode, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, like, subscribe, and if I had to rate this episode, I rated last week's episode 9.9, so I'm going to have to at least go 9.9 .9 for this one, I almost want to give it a 10 out of 10, you know, just, uh, straight up, you know, I was worried about Tormund there when he was almost pulled into the water, but luckily, uh, the Hound, you know, had uh, managed to find uh, his courage to sort of snap back into it and save him, um, which is good. Um, the Hound is just awesome, man. But uh, anyway, uh, if I had to rate it, I want to give it a 10 out of 10, but I try to reserve my 10 out of 10 ratings for, like, the grandest, most emotional, uh, biggest, most satisfying payoffs in a TV show. So I have to hold off, but I'll definitely give it a 9.9 .9 out of 10, about as good as the show can be without being that for me. Um, so yeah, I can't wait to see what the finale does, and, uh, I really just want to see the final season now, please. So yeah, um, catch you guys next time. Peace.